Spring is finally here and with it are coming a whole bunch of new trends and it's a very exciting time when everything's new and fresh. I don't know about you, but I love hearing about some home trends and what people are looking for. Even Google is in on this telling us what the big trends are going to be and what people are looking for. So I really think that this is gonna be a lot of fun. I think that you're gonna love it. Make sure you hit subscribe. If you haven't already, let's jump into spring trends for 2024. Our first trend is called Red Theory, and this one has been going crazy on the internet. It's really interesting because we were just talking about red over on the Living Channel where we talk about fashion and organization and we travel with you guys, get it all over there if, you are, if you're not following the Living Channel. But we've been saying that the color red was going to be trending. Red Theory is all about adding a single pop of red to any space and it just instantaneously makes your entire space look amazing. This theory originated, I think, I think I've pinpointed the source back to a TikTok video. Um, forgive me if I, if that's not where it originated from. It's where I've seen it the most and most people sourcing it, but let me know if it comes from anywhere else. But I really, really want to love this idea. I mean, if all you have to do is add one pop of red to any space and every space is gonna look amazing, think of how little work us designers will have to do. <laughs> I think it's a little bit more involved than that, but the premise is whether you wanna add a pop of red on the wall, if you wanna add a pop of red through tile, if you wanna add a red sink, if you wanna add a red pop in the bedroom, maybe it's gonna be a bedspread, maybe it's gonna be a throw pillow, uh, maybe it's gonna be a piece of art, right? There's a lot of different ways that you can add a pop of red. Maybe even just a candle, okay? Lots of big ways, smaller ways, either way, it's gonna save the day, that's the theory. I came this close to ordering a whole bunch of stuff and trying out this theory, but guys, I just, I just couldn't bring myself to do it because honestly, I've already done red in my home. I had a red sofa. I don't think I even have photos of it. This was 20 years ago. I tried a red sofa. I really liked the red sofa. I had, a, I had it for a while and when we moved overseas, it was left behind and I didn't take it with me. And I've gotta be honest with you, I have not been tempted to repurchase that red. In fact, I've said on other videos, I've done my red thing, I don't think I'm gonna be doing it. Now, I did say that in fashion, and I thought that the red suit was pretty cute. And I'm, I'm really thinking that I could do red in fashion. Love red shoes, love red bags, but when it comes to the home, do I really want like one red item? Are we gonna just switch out this pillow for a red one? I don't think for me, it's something I'm gonna try. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think though, because we're all different. This may feel like something that's just gonna be pure magic for you. And I think the thing to remember with this is that using red doesn't mean that it has to be a fire engine red or like a, a bright cherry red. You can use different shades of red. And I think right now we're seeing that red, like a, a true cherry red in fashion is definitely trending. But also burgundy has been crazy in as well. And I think you can use that color over spring, summer. But for me, I just feel like it, when it comes to home decor, I'm maybe just a little bit more cautious when it comes to how I spend my money than I am buying a blazer. That's just way less money, at least in my mind. One, less, one more pillow would be okay, but I don't think so. For me, I prefer when it comes to color in my home, I prefer to have it replicating more than once. So this is where the theory just kind of dries up completely for me. It's not just the color, it's the theory itself. I personally like to have a color repeating at least three times in a space. So I'm gonna have the caramel colored pillow, I'm gonna have that in the books on the coffee table and I've got accessories in the room and I've even got it in the cabinet, right? In the bookcase. So all around the room, this color is found and I feel like that is a way more cohesive look and it's something for me that's less jarring and I prefer it this way. But you guys let me know what you guys think about this theory down in the comments. Now, whereas I'm a little skeptical about the red theory, I have absolutely no skepticism whatsoever for this next one because I love this one. This is what we've been talking about since before even the beginning of the year that we were talking about that old money style and with that style comes the library. And I have not 
I, I think I've actually just gotten worse <laughs> with time. I absolutely love the bookshelf wealth trend. I'm kind of fanatical about it. I have a daughter, she, she's 23 now. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> she just had her birthday and it was like, whoa, this is happening, this is real. <laughs> This is not a dream. Uh, but yeah, she has her own bookstagram, her own book Instagram. We are obsessed about books in our home. We always have been. When we moved overseas, one of the main things that we took with us was books. I, my husband and I actually both worked in bookstores when we were younger and we love books. And I really love the idea of a library. I have the, I have the coffee table decked out in books. I've got the bookcases fully loaded. I would say that my take is a little bit more modern than a lot of the photos that you see when you look up bookshelf wealth as far as the trend itself. It looks a little bit more traditional, but as far as I'm concerned, who cares? Whichever way you want to add books to your home, I think you should go for it. I absolutely love it. In fact, I'm even thinking about ways that I can add more bookshelves into our home because I love to buy books, I love to read. I've always seen it as just the most incredible gift that we are given in life. And I have always said that a definition of wealth, at least for me, is books, <laughs> chocolate, and flowers. <laughs> It's the definition of true wealth to me. Of course, having people that you really love surrounding you, of course, that has to be included in that. But as far as like the things that we have that make our lives feel rich, right? To me, books has always been a part of that list. It's just something that I love. So I am in full support of this and there is a ton of inspiration on Pinterest and on the internet right now for this one. And I think you should go for it. You could do a big bookshelf in, you could do a big, big shelf in your living room. You could do one in a corner, a hallway that's just a little bit forlorn is the perfect place to put some bookshelves. You can go to Ikea and buy bookshelves. You can invest in something a little bit more. I love them arched. I love them just clean lined and linear. I love them when they have glass on the front. I do like the glass on the front because then you don't have to dust it. <laughs> At least not so often. The other day I opened my cabin and I was like, wow, there's a fingerprint down here. Maybe I need to dust inside the case as well. <laughs> but either way, bookshelf wealth to me is a trend that I think we're, this is gonna go beyond spring. I love the fact that it's popping up right now and we've got like endless summer ahead of us and lots of book reading, but I think it's one, I hope that we'll just see this one forever and ever and it'll just never go away. I love it. The next one is very interesting because this one came from an article on Google. This article was all about what trends people are searching for and one of the number one things that people are searching for right now is a cozy chair. I'm like, wow, that's so interesting. How do people even define that, right? That could be so many different things. But if you ask me what makes a chair cozy, well, I think having it made in, I like some down in that chair. <laughs> I want something that's nice and kind of squishy, kind of like melt down into it. Not too much, you still wanna be able to get up without, you know, being like, <laughs> needing a rope to get out of it. <laughs> I've got my requirements here, okay? But I've pictured a few options. I'm picturing maybe some boot clay. It could be a soft velvet. A leather chair would also be very, very cozy. I love leather in like a taupe color. Oh, it's so yummy. It's so, so yummy. Uh, it could swivel. <laughs> it could even recline. I love the new reclining chairs they've come out with that where they're hidden and you can't even tell that they are even a recliner, the options are really limitless. And then when you think about it, where are you gonna put the cozy chair, right? I think that your bedroom is a great spot. Maybe buy your bookshelf wealth bookcases. You could put it by the fire. You could also have a cozy chair outdoors. Take something outside and sit outdoors, get a little sun and a little reading. Honestly, the options are limitless and I think that a cozy chair is always a good idea. But I'm so excited that at, for spring 2024, a cozy chair is something that so many people are looking for and there's so many beautiful options in all different price ranges. So if this is one you wanna save on, check out places like Wayfair and Amazon. And if you're wanting to spend a little bit more, West Elm, Pottery Barn, always great options. And then of course you guys know I have a thing. Maybe you've seen the video about our house where 
they had that boucle chair. I have not stopped thinking about it. Boucle, swivelly, I'm like, ooh, that looks so cozy, so cute, so chic too. Yeah, either way, lots of options. And I'm for one saying yes to this one, but you guys let me know what you think down in the comments. Our next trend is called the wellness garden trend. And I really think that this is an incredible trend. It's really coming out of a time when so many of us are looking to our homes for healing. And I've always believed that the home was a place of healing, but now more than ever, we are craving this. So the wellness garden trend is all about creating a garden or an outdoor space that brings healing to your life. I am in the process of trying to redo my entire backyard. In fact, basically all of my landscaping. When we first moved in, apparently the homeowners before us over fertilized the grass. So when we moved in, it was all bright green. And within a few weeks, it was dead. I mean, completely gone. We had a mud pile. I, I'll try to find the photos because literally the front yard and the backyard were just mud. There was nothing left of the grass. And so we've laid down some new sod, but I haven't really gotten out there and redone my garden. So long story short, I'm excited about this trend because it's one I'm personally interested in. And I've been redoing my own landscaping and daydreaming about what I want. It really is all about touching all five senses, sight, smell, touch, and taste, okay? All of these are really important aspects of a wellness garden. So when you see a garden and it's beautiful and it's aesthetically pleasing, it brings your soul just so much joy. But when you're walking through your garden and your, your steps are releasing the scent of thyme, maybe some mint, you run your hand across that lavender and the scent is released, you have fragrant oranges and lemons and the blossoms are blooming and it's so fragrant. This is when I think you really start to tap into all the senses. When you can taste, you're able to pull an apple off of your tree and blackberries, I can't wait for the blackberries to bloom in the garden again this year. And you can literally pick fruit and herbs from your garden. I think that you are touching on something that so many of us have really left untouched around our homes. I think, I don't know about where you live, but here in the US, most of us think of our land around our house as a yard, and we don't really think of it as a garden. So I think there's a, this huge mind shift happening right now towards our outdoor spaces, and it's one I hope becomes a long-term, a long-term uh, trend, right? This is not just for spring 2024, it goes so far beyond that. I think also including elements like fire and water in our gardens really just also brings in the sounds, it releases all of the senses for us. And so I think that a wellness garden is so powerful. I truly believe that this is one that we should all be jumping onto. Finally, a micro trend that I think really is just huge is the cherry blossom trend. I got some cherry blossoms last year and I am so excited and pumped about pulling those out. I'll be pulling those out in the next few days. I can't wait. I love this trend. I think that it's absolutely gorgeous and I think that you can do them. Yes, of course we all love if we can trim off of a cherry tree and have a big branch. Uh, I have a pear tree that has a similar look to it. I'll probably trim a branch off of it, but I don't want to trim off of it too soon because it's so pretty blooming in the yard. <laughs> but the other way around this, if you don't have a cherry tree or a pear or a peach that really give you that really gorgeous bloom, you could also think about just doing some faux options because there are some really good ones out there. And because they were so popular last year, I'm seeing so many more companies coming out with cherry blossoms this year. So I know for sure that Pottery Barn has some really good options. April has them. I don't know how long the stock will last because they always sell out. But I, I have to be honest with you, I've ordered some off of Amazon and I have not found any that I would recommend. But I will leave a link for the ones that I think are really, really good. But either way, I think adding some faux blossoms into your home that really look 
real and are really well done can really just give you this flush of spring and you can keep them for the entire spring season and it's not like one branch and it's gone within a few days. I, I just think that that cherry blossom trend is one that I love. And you could go for a really big vessel, you could go for a smaller vessel. I think that a big display of them, just a nice big spray of them is just spectacular. And if you go with the faux ones, you're gonna be able to pull them out year after year. So it's a little, it's always a little expensive buying faux plants, right? It's always like, ooh, yeah, ooh. And then you're like, oh, but then I pull them out year after year after year. These are a few trends that I've been seeing and I just felt like we just needed to have a good chat about it. I feel like you guys are gonna love them as well. I'm very curious to hear your opinion and your thoughts on these. If you're seeing them in your area or are these just online, we need the tea. Spill it down in the comments. I cannot wait to hear what you have to say. And thank you so much for coming to hang out with me and talking about home trends. And this is what I love about the channel is that I found kindred spirits that want to talk about the same things that I love. And I'm like, this is what I love about our community so much. So thank you for stopping by. You make my day every time you do. I absolutely love it. And uh, cheers. I hope you have a wonderful day and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.